All right, welcome to the Module 3 project for CAPL 1023. For this project, we'll, we will be creating a business letter. We're going to start by creating a letterhead. Um, and so to, to focus more on the skills of creating that letterhead and then doing some document formatting, I have also included a data file of just the letter. So once we get to that point, we're going to bring in the text of this letter into this document that we're creating. Um, and then we'll be able to go from there. So with this letterhead, we're first going to create with our, excuse me, with the letter, we will first create the letterhead. We'll save that document and then we'll do a, a save as right away to change it. So we'll have two files for this. We're going to have a file with just the letterhead on it, nothing else. And then the second file we're going to have is going to be the, um, the actual letter with the letterhead and the text and then I believe we'll have a third file to submit and that is going to be the little um, the flyer that we're including that deals with the orientation schedule uh, this project is about an acceptance letter into a college called Sunset States College all right so let's go ahead and get started so the first thing we're going to do I'm going to turn on my formatting marks just so you can see everything that I'm doing and we're going to go ahead and insert a shape. So I'm right on right now. I'm on my normal style. Uh, when we add that letter, we're going to change it to no spacing. But for now, we're on normal. I'm going to go ahead and go insert, and I'm going to insert a shape, and I'm going to insert a rectangle. All right. And so I'm just going to bring my insertion point into my document right here, and then I'm just going to go ahead and draw a rectangle in there. Now once we've once we've got it in there we can do formatting to it. Our drawing tools format tab the size option is right over here so we'll be we'll be um, giving it a specific size but just so you know that that's all we want to, to do to begin with. All right so we're going to go ahead And go to your size. We're going to make it 0.5 high. I don't know why mine does that all the time, but it's going to be 0.5 high and it's going to be 5 inches wide. So 5 wide. All right. So that's our the space. And now we're going to change the position of our of our uh, um, shape here as well. And so right now you can see we can move the shape around. Right now this is called floating because we can put it anywhere we want to. And so there's a difference between floating or fixing it or calling it in, uh, in, in line. So floating versus in line. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to, going to affix this shape to a specific spot on our sheet. So in our Drawing Tools Format tab, we're going to choose this Position option, and we're going to say Top Center with Square Text Wrapping. And so now we've affixed this to the top center of our page, and we've, we're wrapping the text squarely around this shape. All right, so this way we will, we will not cover any of our text. Anytime we start typing text, it'll automatically go around this object. All right. So we've got our sh shape still selected. And let's go ahead and go to our layout options. And we are going to wrap text. And we're going to say choose top and bottom. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to apply some a style to it. So with this again we're, we still got it selected. We're going to come over to our shape styles and we are going to click on that drop down and these are all some of our defaults. We're going to choose moderate effect orange accent 2. You can see it kind of gives it this little gradient fill on it. Now we're going to change our outline. So we've got our 
style. This is a shape fill. Now we're going to come on down to our shape outline. And for our shape outline, we're going to choose gold accent 4 as the outline of our shape. So that will be the color. And we can also apply an effect to our shape. And so, and I've said, mentioned before that this book loves the glow effect. So let's go to our shape effects. And we are going to choose the glow five point gold accent four. Glow five point gold accent four. All right, and look at that beauty. Okay, so now we're going to add some text to the shape. So we can just click, again, click in there to make it active, and then we will just start typing text. So we're going to type the text, Sunset, Sunset State College. All right, it's automatically going to center that text. And then we're going to make this font a little bit bigger. So we're going to select it and we are going to change it to 24 point so you can either use your mini toolbar go to your home tab use your grow font increase it whatever way works best for you we're going to change that to 24 point all right and then with it still selected We've got that, and now let's do a let's go ahead and do a quick save here. So I'm just going to deselect it for a moment, and we're going to save this as. And again, wherever you keep your assignments, for me it's on my flash drive, my 1023 assignments file. This is for module three, and we are calling it S. Whoopsie, S C underscore W D underscore three dash sunset state letterhead sunset state letterhead all right there we go all right so let's go ahead and I'm gonna select that object again let's make this text bold I think it wanted us to make it bold okay so now we can deselect it now we are going to add a picture and so I think this is this is showing us to use an online picture but I believe this picture is included but if we just go to insert online picture and type the word eagle it wants us to use enter and then the one that the one that they use in here I don't see right off the bat but I believe they've also included it so let's go to insert pictures and then we can go to our data files for module 3 and there's the flaming eagle there it is all right so we've got that picture inserted into our document now. now. So let's go ahead and resize it. So again, with our insertion point on the picture, we've got it selected. We can come up to our sizing options. And now mine's going to keep closing on me, so I'm just going to open it this way to change it. And so we are going to um, open. Yeah, actually, this is how we're going to do it anyway. We're going to open that up. And then in the scale area, so we've got our absolute height but we've also got a scale area so we're going to change the height percent to 10 whoopsie not one and then tab over and make sure that it's there as well Okay, that looks like that still looks a little too big. Let me check. 
check that one more time. Yeah, because I think it's ultimately it's going to end up being 0.5 high. There. That looks better. All right, so now we can, yeah, 0.5 by 6, 0.65, that's right. Okay, so that's what we want, how we want it. It's going to be 0.5 by 0.65, and we're going to change the color now, so make sure we've got it selected. Choose our color, and here's our different colors. We're going to go ahead and choose the gold accent for dark option. So it's going to give us that little gold background color. All right, and then we're going to adjust the brightness. So we're going to come to our corrections. And now we've got our brightness and contrast right over here. So we're going to choose the brightness 20, contrast minus 20 is the one we're going to choose for this. So it's going to brighten that gold a little bit. And we're going to add a border to it. So we're going to go ahead and choose, make sure we're on our Picture Tools Format tab. Here's our styles. Here's our picture border. I'm going to choose the picture border, gold accent 4. And then we're going to change the text wrapping for this object. So again, it's still selected, our wrap text group. And we're going to change this to in front of text. All right. Okay. So now we're going to move this object where we've got it. So we're just going to make sure we've got it selected and just bring it up right over here. So it's right next to that shape that we've added earlier. All right. So now we're going to duplicate this because we want to make this the same. We want to add this shape over here. So we're going to go ahead and select it. And I'm just going to do a control C control V. So I've copied it and pasted it. Now I'm going to bring this one over to this side. And now that we've got it over here, I want to flip it because I want it to kind of mirror this one. So we're going to go over to our rotate object group and say flip horizontally. And that's going to flip it right around. All right. So we've got that looking good. Again, I'm just going to do a little quick save here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to insert a symbol from our symbol gallery. So I'm going to go ahead and right down below this this object I'm going to add some text and then we're going to use the symbol to differentiate the text. I'm going to control E to center this text and we're going to type Office of Admissions comma 1001 Canton Street comma MC 3300 comma Novato California And the zip code five four nine four five. Excuse me, nine four nine four five. And then space bar. And 
and then we are going to add a little bullet shape. So we're going to go to our Insert tab, Symbols, and then choose the Symbol option. And we're going to click on the little dot symbol. So let's go More Symbols, and mine is going to be in my normal, I believe. I'm just going to come up to my normal group. Oh my goodness. Alright, so there's a bigger one. I don't know if I want that big one or a smaller one. Well, maybe it is that. But again, we're just going to insert the symbol in there. So I'm going to choose. That one's fine, I guess. All right, so we add that bullet point in there. And then I'm going to hit space. I'm going to type a phone number, 415-555-0199, space. And then I'm going to add that symbol again. So now it's going to be in my recently used one. So it's right up here. Go ahead and click it, space, and then the website sunset.edu okay. All right, so Office of Admissions, got the, the address, followed by the phone number with that little symbol, followed by the web address. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a border below this. So with our insertion point anywhere on this line, but I'm, right now I'm at the end, I'm going to go ahead and click the bottom border button. And that's going to add a border directly below it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit the insert or my enter button because I want to go down to the next line. Now you'll notice that when I do this, I have my bottom border moves down a row. And so the way to bring that bottom border back up and start your document right down here is I'm just going to go to my, uh, where is it? It's the clear, right here. So my little clear formatting, I'm just going to say clear formatting, and then it brings me right down to that next line. So I've just eliminated the formatting that I'd applied earlier. All right. So I can go ahead and do a save. So now this is that sunset state letterhead. So we've got our letterhead created. So now we've got that done. Let's go ahead and add our business letter in here. And so it, as I said, that business letter, I've already, I've already created the text for it. So let's go ahead. We've got our letterhead created. I want to save that letterhead in case I need to use it again. So I'm just going to do a file, save as, and then I'm just going to save it in the same spot. And this time we're going to save our document as Thomas Welcome Letter. So it's going to be WD3-Thomas Welcome Letter. So I'm saving it in the same location. All right. And so now we have created, we've already created that data file, so we don't have to do all the typing. And so what I'm going to do is we, we, we're not learning this method yet, but I'm going to teach this method to you right now. So when we're merging two documents together, um, the way we're going to do right now, We've already created one file, so we're just going to insert the new file into this. So I'm going to come up here to say insert. Again, I've got my insertion point where I want that. I'm going to say insert. I'm going to come over here to my text group. Choose the object option. I'm going to click the drop down and say text from file. 
All right, so when I get that text from file, I'm just going to navigate back to where I've saved this data file. So for me, it's in my data files for module three. Again, I've called it the unformatted acceptance letter. I'm just going to click on that and then insert it. And so now here, you notice that when we're up in this part of our document, this is the normal spacing. If I click down here, we're now in no spacing, which is exactly what we want. All right. Okay, so let's do ahead, go ahead and do a quick save on here. So we've got our text saved in here. Now, the first thing we want to do is create some tab stops because we are, there's a difference between a block format letter and a modified block letter. A block letter, all of the text is going to align on this left margin. A modified block, our date, signature line, and um, complementary closing are all going to align closer to like three and a half, between three and a half and four inch, four inches on our tab stop. And so we're going to create a modified block. And so for this case, we want to select just this text that we've added, so from the date on down, and we're going to in insert some tab stops. So make sure your ruler is displayed, if not, your view tab ruler. And we are going to add a left tab stop. So make sure this looks like a little L. We're just going to come over to our ruler and then click at the 3.5 mark right there. So now you've got that little tab has been inserted. And if you need to verify it's in the right spot, just open your, in your home tab paragraph launcher. Down at the bottom of this dialog box, you've got your tabs. You can see we've got a 3.5 left tab, and that's what we want. All right, so now we can deselect this text. And now we are ready to go ahead and begin this document. So I'm going to hit my Enter key one time. And then now I'm going to hit Tab once. So when I hit Tab, it's going to move this text over to the 3.5 mark. Now normally, if you tab, it's going to, the default tab setting is 0.5. So every half inch there will be a, a tab. However, with this one, we have overridden those 0.5 tabs and we've created this 3.5 tab. So we've got this text here. We've entered all of this other text. And so once we've once we come down to this we'd like to inform you of important dates that are upcoming, we are going to insert a table at this point to kind of highlight a schedule. So we're going to bring our insertion point down to this second paragraph mark below the we would like to inform you of up important upcoming dates. And here we are going to insert our table and we are going to choose a, well it wants us to choose a a, a one row by three columns. Um, however, when this is all done, it's going to be one by f or three by four. So I'm just going to go ahead and right away insert the three by four. All right. So I'm going to bring my insertion point into this so you can see it inserts the table directly above that paragraph mark. So this is right where we want it. And if you look at page 3-31 in the textbook, um, 331, 332, that's where we are right now. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to enter the text into this ta table. So the, top, the first cell is going to say date. We can just tab to go to the next one. Event, tab, and then notes. 
Now I'm going to hit tab again and I'm going to go to the next cell. Now if I was, if I hadn't created this like that, if I hit tab, it would automatically bring a new line. So we, what we've, what we've done, we've just kind of eliminated the step of adding rows as we go. So this first one is going to be July 12. Dash 16 and July 19 dash 23 and then tab or you can use your right arrow either way orientation and registration tab over and the notes see brief schedule on next page All right, then the third row, August 16-17, move in days, so move hyphen in days, and assigned by housing services. And then finally, August 23rd, or August 23, fall term begins, first day of classes. All right, so we've got our text entered into our table. So now we're going to go ahead and apply a table style. And so you can see right up here in our table tools design tab, we've got a table style group. Now there, you can see there's a couple different kinds of tables. There's a plain table, there are grid tables, there are list tables. So those are our three basic tables. And then you'll notice over here you've got options for your tables. So a header row is going to differentiate the top row from the rest of it. A total row is going to differentiate the bottom row and it's going to you know, give it a, a different style. Banded rows are these, so it's going to alternate the colors. So it's going to be like a dark blue, light blue, dark blue, light blue, or blue, white, blue, white, something like that. So those are banded rows. Banded columns will be the same thing, only with columns it'll be a dark blue column, light blue column. Um, more, more common is a banded row as opposed to a banded column. The first column is going to kind of, you can see right over here, it's going to differentiate that first column as opposed to anything else. And so you, if you hover over these as you're, as you're building that table, you can kind of see, get a preview of what it will look like. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to choose in our table styles, we're going to choose the grid table one, light accent two. So here's our grid table. So grid table one, light accent two. So it's going to give it that kind of orange hue to it. All right, and so you can see we've got a header row on ours, and it's bolded it over here. So this means we've got a first row, or a first column, and a header row. All right, and so in this case, looking at the text in here, it looks like it it doesn't, we don't have a first column selected, so just make sure that's deselected, because all those other columns are going to be the same. All right. So now let's go, do, go ahead and do a quick save here. And here, now we're going to actually add a row. And so I'm going to bring my insertion point 
between the between the rows that I want. So right over here, I want to add a row between August 16th and August 23rd. If I just hover there, it'll it'll add a little plus sign. I can just click on that plus sign, and then it's going to move it right in there. So here I'm going to say August 16 dash 20, and tab over, welcome week. tab over, get schedule during orientation. All right, now we're going to, this notes section, we're actually going to come over this column, get that bold down pointing arrow, select it, and we're going to italicize this text. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a little quick save again. I'm going to deselect my table. Now I've got, I'm going to continue entering this text right here below. And now here we are creating a bulleted list. And so one way, as you're typing, if you do, if you do Shift-8 space, it'll automatically create that bulleted list. This, we've already, or I've already created the text for you. So I'm just going to go ahead and highlight this three item list and create a bulleted list out of it. All right, and now we're gonna continue with that modified block formatting. So I'm gonna come down to my Sincerely line, just select at front of that. And again, you can see we've, since we selected all of this text together, I've still got my 3.5 inch um, tab, so I'm just going to hit the tab one time. It automatically brings that text to 3.5 mark. And I'll do the same thing for these next two lines, the Lucy Song line. Um, hmm. I don't know why. Let's see. Okay, for some reason, it created my Lucy song line as a first line indent, um, but I just eliminated that. Okay, so there we go. We've got this text, along with this date up at the top, are all at that 3.5 mark. All right. So again, we can go ahead and save that progress as we're going. So this is, this is the end of our letter. So I'm going to go ahead and right here, I am going to insert a page break. All right, so let's go ahead and lay out break, page break. And that brings that page break right over here. And so now we're going to enter some additional text. So this time we're going to create a smart art graphic in this uh, in this um, second page. So let's go ahead and start creating it. So I'm going to, with my insertion point on that second page, I'm going to go ahead and enter the text that I'm going to format. So I'm going to type orientation and registration. But let's, uh, first of all, let's go ahead and format it, like pre-format it. So control E to center the text we're going to do. We're also going to make this text bold. We're going to choose the 36 point font. All right. And then we're going to choose the font color orange accent to darker 25%. And then we should be ready to go. So we're going to enter the text orientation and registration. Enter. And then student schedule. All right. 
Now we're going to add and format a border. So we're going to go to our border and shading. Actually, let's, let's select the, this text that we're going to do first. All right, and then come to our first to our border. So we're going to select our border option and then we're going to choose the option. Oh, borders and shading just down at the bottom. All right. And then from here, we're going to choose the box border, applying it to the paragraph. And we're going to choose the fifth style. So it's going to be one two, three, four, five, this dotted line. So it's going to be the dash dot, dash dot. And orange accent two is our color. And the width is going to be two and a quarter points. Click OK. And there's the start of that. All right, now we're going to hit enter. And again, as we did before, it brings down this, it brings down the box a little bit too far for us. We don't want it down there. But again, the easy way to do this is to just click on our clear formatting and it eliminates all the formatting we've just applied, brings us back to Calibri 11, automatic black lettering. So easy peasy. Okay, so now we've got our insertion point right down below that. Now we're going to click the no spacing option because we're going to use no spacing again. I'm going to hit enter and then we're going to start typing the text of our um, flyer. So we look forward to meeting you. All right, so there's the text we're going to enter here. And let's go ahead and change this font to 14 point. And then now we're going to underline a couple words. So we're going to select the text two days. So for two days. And then we're going to click where it says underline. Now we click that drop down arrow, you can see we've got some different options on how we want to underline. So we're going to choose the sixth style. So one, two, three, four, five, six, the same one we had earlier. So choose that sixth style. And then let's also go ahead and choose a different color. So we're going to match the one we just did before. So underline color, green, or excuse me, orange accent two. All right. So we've got that so we've got this selected and now we want to also apply this same formatting to another part of this. So the please over by please dress accordingly. So we're going to click on that format painter option while we've got that text selected. And then we're going to select the text dress accordingly. So I'm just going to come over here with my paintbrush where it says dress accordingly, paint that, release, and we've applied that formatting there as well. All right. So I'm going to control end to go to the end of my document and then press enter two times and then now we're going to insert a smart art so let's go ahead and go to our insert tab and our smart art this is the icon for smart art yours is going to say smart art right over here and we are going to choose the smart art graphic um, it's in the list group and the one we're choosing is the grouped list. 
is. So which one is it? It is right there. So grouped list. All right. I'm going to say OK. It's going to bring that text right in here. And so we don't, we only need two columns, so we don't need all of this stuff. So I'm going to, so in order to eliminate some of these, we have to eliminate them piece by piece. I can't just click on this big one and delete it. I have to delete one piece at a time and then I can delete it. So just click on a, click on a sh little shape, delete the other little shape, delete, and then the whole shape and delete. But you, you can't delete one whole shape at a time. You just have to eliminate the pieces. All right, so now we've got just the two item thing selected. So we're going to go to this first one, type day one. And this is day two. Day one, this first text, we're going to say check in. And you can see as we type, it automatically modifies the text. 9-10. And then down here, welcome and general info session. And then you can see it automatically adjusts all of the text for us as we type. All right. And so, but we actually want a couple more of these objects coming down. So what we're going to do is with our insertion point right here, we're going to click on add a shape after and it's going to add a shape below and so now here we're going to type lunch 12 o'clock to 12 45 all right and then again we're going to add a shape after and we're going to continue doing this a couple more times. So I'm going to go ahead and add this shape and then I will be right back. All right, so here is what this smart art actually looks like when you're done entering all the text. And so you can see it right here. Uh, it's also on page 352 and 353, 3-52, 3-53 of your textbook if you've got it. Um, if not, go ahead and pause the video right here so you can see all of this text that you'll be needing to type. Um, but that's all the text that that's in that smart art. All right, so once we've got all that text entered, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to modify our smart art a little bit. So we've got this smart art here. Again, I'm going to select the entire graphic and let's change the color on it. So with that smart art selected, I'm going to use my smart art design tab I'm gonna pin this back down all right and so we're gonna to go to our smart art styles so here's our smart art styles I'm gonna change my color so change colors I'm gonna choose the colorful accent colors so colorful accent colors very beautiful makes it all nice and fun all right, so once I've got that, then I'm going to also change the SmartArt style over here. So I'm going to choose the option uh, Subtle Effect. So click over here. We can kind of preview what they'll look like. You know, when I'm doing them, I prefer some of the, like a cartoon. I think this is cartoon because I like that kind of glow on it. But we're going to choose Subtle Effect, which I believe is right here. Yes. So the subtle effect option is going to give it this kind of pastel-y feel. So we're going to choose that subtle effect. All right. So with that smart art here, we can resize it as well. So I'm going to 
bring this lower right handle, so right down here, I'm going to grab this and I'm going to elongate it a little bit. To make it a little bit taller. And I don't know if it tells us a specific size to drag it to. Um, it just tells us to drag it down, to resize it. So it says until it's roughly the same size as the image and I'm going to look at two multiple pages to view and that's pretty close to where it is on this page. It's right around the edge, right around the end of where that text is. So I think we're pretty good. All right, so let's go ahead and do a save. All right, so that's that. All right, and then the last step here would be um, creating an envelope. And so I'm going to come back to 100% and I'm going to go to page one. I'm going to select the text right here for Caleb Thomas. So I'm going to select the address. I'm going to go to my mailing tab and then I'm going to choose the envelope button. And then when I do that, you can see it brings up a, a creates an envelope for me. I'm going to go ahead and change this return address to the college. So Sunset State College. And it was Office of Admissions. One thousand one Canton Street MC thirty three hundred Novato, California, and I believe it was nine four nine four five or something. Um, nine four nine four five, yes. All right. And so the, once I've got that, I'm going to go ahead and say Add to Document. And I don't need to save the new re return address. But so once I add this to the document, you can see it creates a letter or a, an envelope for me. So as long as if your printer will print envelopes, it will print this envelope, then it will print the letter, and then it will print this registration flyer. So go ahead and save that, and that is this Module 3 project. That's done. It's ready to submit.